and Emily, how are you guys? I'm yeah. good, thanks. Are you a little bit nervous about cooking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Listen, don't you worry because I only recently started cooking. So this recipe is not a hard recipe at all. Um, thank you so much for joining in and donating for the Pink Ribbon Foundation. Really, really appreciate it. So tell me, have either of you cooked anything ever? No. Define no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put a piece of bread in the toaster. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good start. So here, let me make sure you can see everything, angle my camera. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make sure that you've got everything ready to go. Did you chop up the uh, chorizo? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And the red onion? Yeah. Yeah. Good. And we've also got the diced chicken breasts? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Red pepper, you got the red pepper done? I didn't know how to cook a red pepper, cut a red pepper. You don't need to, okay, cut it, it's a, you can cut it in lots of different ways, really. You just need to make sure that you take, I'll show you one here, look. All you need to do for a pepper is you see this bit here in the middle. Hold on, let me get one of my arms. You see this bit here in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, all you want to do is take that whole piece out. So what I do is I cut a little circle right around the edge, a full little okay. circle, and then I pull it out. And on the inside, you're gonna see lots of little seeds and stuff like that. You just clean it out with some water and then you can start chopping it up however you want to chop it. Okay. Shall we give it a go? Did you do it already or not yet? No, should I do it now? Yeah, I'll do it now. I'll, show, I'll, be, I'll be right here with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is Ali Ash's favorite recipe as well. So he's really looking forward to when it's finished. <laughs> Yeah, so you just make a nice circle, very good, around the edge, careful with your fingers. And then you pull out that little middle section. That nice, you see all the little seeds in there? Rinse yeah. them all out with some water. Rinse the pepper out with some water. Nice. And you have amazing hair, Emma. Emily, you're Emily. Emma's. Oh, I dyed it today, so. <laughs> Did you? Well, you look amazing. <laughs> There you go. So you rinsed it out. So now you could literally just cut it right down the middle and then you slice it into nice thin little slices. There you go. Oh, that's, okay. that's okay. It's okay if it's a little bit wonky. The peppers all have different shapes really, so it's fine. And now you're just going to do it nice little slices like this. So that you get little pieces like that. Okay. Slice it and then you cut it in half again. There you go. Well, while we're slicing, did you want to ask me a way of first question? Um, how did you cope with lockdown? How did I cope with lockdown? Well, run, help me. Because <laughs> I was like you, I'd never cooked before. I was really nervous to start cooking. And because I always am on tour or away on Strictly, I don't always have time to be home to do cooking. So it was nice to be home and start doing this, figuring out how do you cut a pepper? How do you chop up an onion? How what is a tablespoon of oil even look like? What is chicken stock? You know, all those things. So I kept um, I kept myself busy learning how to cook in the kitchen a little bit more. I'm not a master chef, but I can cook nice meals for Ali Ash and I now, which is Ali Ash is very happy about that. <laughs> and uh, while she's studying her pepper, um, do you also have the 150 mils of chicken stock? No, I need four pepper There we go. Yeah. Okay. So all you do is, just, did you get the little chicken stock cubes? Yeah. Yeah, so all you do is you boil about 150, maybe 200, a little bit more, except a little bit more in there. Boil the water, put in the cube in there, and rinse, let it dissolve in there, and you get a nice little chicken stock. Yay! We're almost there. My kettle's really loud. That's okay. That's okay. Go for it. And what about your garlic? Did you slice up your garlic? No, I haven't done that. Okay, that's all right. One little thing at a time. You go, go heating up the water. I had it already made, ready to go, so I can guide you through it. <laughs> there you go. And you just put the boiling water in there and then stir it a little bit and it becomes, it'll end up looking a little bit like this, like a little chicken soup kind of thing. There you go. Nice. <laughs> well, so you both speak Strictly fans, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Did you have a favorite celeb this year? Who's my favorite? Um, 
I'm trying to think it was <laughs> ages ago. Yeah, I know. It feels like ages ago, doesn't it? Yeah, it's who was on it? Um, um, well, I danced with Will. Yeah, I really like you and Will. Ali Ash danced with Emma Wayman. Um, there were some really good ones this year, actually. Who who was in the final? Kelvin won. Kelvin was in the final and won. Emma Barton, she was in the final as well. Karim, he was amazing. Oh, I love Karim. I thought he was yeah. Good. There was a um, really, really, really good year, actually. I really liked Alex Scott as well. I thought she was awesome. Yeah, she was really amazing. Yeah, there, it was a, a Mike, Mike for sure. He was so awesome. He just went for it, didn't he? He didn't care what anybody thought. He was just going for it every single week with Katya. Yeah, that was it was a good good, good series this year, I would say. Definitely. Yeah. So are you chopping up the garlic cloves? Yeah. Nice. Okay, really finely sliced like, like this. So it becomes really, really, really fine. Okay. Okay. Um, I, Aliash, Aliash's mom got me this amazing like chopper that does it for me in two seconds. It chops everything up really fast. <laughs> and I use it for everything. The only problem is the electrical outlet is European. So I have to use an adapter. <laughs> Because she got it for us for Christmas. It's true dedication to cutting your do your garlic, though. Say again. It's true dedication to getting you cutting your garlic, though. Oh my gosh, yeah, because it gets sticky, doesn't it, in your fingertips when you cut up when you cut up garlic? But it's such was one of my favorite seasonings, you know, garlic and onion and pepper. Those that three combo for me is like <gasps> I use that for almost everything. It's my favorite. It's going really savory. How are you going with the pepper, Emma? Yeah, I've cut it up. Good, good, good. And then do you guys have your paprika? A little a bit of paprika? Yeah. yeah, good. And just a little bit of pepper, black pepper. Yeah. Nice. Okay. We're almost there. We're getting ready. Yay! <laughs> now I didn't I didn't say it, but for the chicken, you just always put a little bit of salt and a tiny bit of pepper as well. Just on the chicken black. Okay, before you start cooking it. Tiny bit of salt and a tiny bit of pepper. Or if you would really like pepper, you could put more, but I can't do too much pepper. I'm like, Ugh. I'm Cuban, but Cuban food is not spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody thinks that I'm Cuban, so I'm gonna like all the spicy food, but I'm the opposite. I'm like, no, 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 spicy for me, please. <laughs> uh, what else would you guys like to know about Strictly or Aliash and I? Who's your, who would be your dream partner to have on Strictly? Oh, my dream partner on Strictly. That's always a good question. You know, when I get that question asked, I always try and give the same answer because it's never about a specific person. It's about a type of person. You want someone that like will really work really hard, but at the same time, have a good time and laugh. And it's such a difficult journey. You have so many ups and downs. So what you want more than anything is someone that you're going to have a really good time with and laugh with and also work hard. So hopefully you get far in the competition. But um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I would love to dance with just somebody like that. You know who I would love to dance with? Funny enough, it's hard to call. He seems so fun. He's so creative. He was the judge on, did you guys watch The Greatest Dancer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was one of the judges and he's so creative and he's always doing these amazing kind of, he's got really great ideas and really cool YouTube videos. And he does a lot of things with like Disney being redone and remade. And I'm a massive Disney fan. So yeah. I love I love his stuff. But yeah, just someone really creative and fun and that wants to work hard as well. Okay. But I've been really yeah. lucky. All of my partners have been, I mean, I, I still talk to every single one of them. They're all still my friends. <laughs> Even Julian, Jake Wood. Julian made my wedding dress. So I was That's really happy about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, how are we? Are we still chopping away with the garlic? I have quite finished. I'm okay. still going. Emma, Emma's still going, it's okay. It takes a little bit of time because it gets sticky. That's all right. Um, but yeah, I think um, somebody also made, I love Harry Styles lately. I love Harry Styles' new music. Oh, yeah. his new album is amazing. So if he did Strictly, I would love to dance with him as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, where are you guys? What part of the UK are you guys in? Uh, I'm from Torquay. Oh, I'm Torquay! Torquay. <laughs> I love it down there. And Ash and I did um uh, do our own tour. We always go go down to Torquay. Yeah. There's a really beautiful theater there. We're sitting right on a cliff, 
overlooking the ocean. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, what's the name of it? Uh, Princess Theatre. Oh, that's the one, yeah. And it has like two, like, two stories, like windows, and you could just, it's such a beautiful venue. We love dancing there. Really pretty place. And what about yourself, Emma? Um, I'm from Essex. No, you're not too far from me then. I'm North no. London. <laughs> Do you like The Only Way is Essex? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I danced with Mark Wright um, uh, this Christmas for the Christmas special. That was fun. Oh, yeah. He always says, Jot my internet, Jot my What? What? <laughs> no, my internet. <laughs> I love the accent though. I think it's a fun accent. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you both do? What do you do, Emily? Um, I'm at uni. In, yeah, uni. Um, I'm studying speech therapy. You study to be a? Speech and language therapist. Oh, wow. Speaking of accents. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. How did you get into that? Um, my mum looked after this autistic boy who had an speech therapist come to our house and do like loads of assessments and that with him and oh. like 12 and since then that's what I've wanted to do. So, yeah, oh I'm that's beautiful. <laughs> what a lovely career, what a lovely thing to do for someone to help. And what about yourself Emma? Um, I'm at college still um, okay. and I have a part-time job as well so. What's your part-time? Um, I work in a like a dog kennel Oh, so do you see lots of doggies? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I love animals. Do you know what you want to study yet, or are you still undecided? Um, I'm doing media at the minute. Oh, nice media. Yeah. And media is ever changing at the moment with everything happening with social media, like Facebooks or TikToks or uh, Instagrams. Sometimes I find it hard to keep up. I'm like, did I post them? What was the last time I posted on Twitter? What was the last time? I <laughs> A Facebook, I forget all the time because it's been around for so long. So I always forget to go on Facebook. Um, but yeah, that's a really interesting path. Oh, good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I am actually at the moment also studying. I'm Ooh. taking an online course from uh, a big university in the USA called Yale University. It's, uh, it's like one of the big ones, like Harvard or like Cambridge here or Oxford. And they offer this online course that you can take over 10 weeks on the science of well-being. So when I'm finished with the course, I'll be certified in wellness and well-being. Yeah, I know. Ever learning, Jeanette is ever learning. That's another thing I did in lockdown. <laughs> I've only got a couple classes left. I think about three, three or four hours left of studying that I used to do, and then I'll be done. That's well. I went to uni as well. I studied finance, though. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. I, I know. And I worked in a bank. So I was working in a bank nine to about five every day. And then in the evenings from six to eight, eight thirty, I would go to uni. And then eight thirty to about 10 o'clock, I'd go to dance class. But I didn't have uni every single day of the week. I'd have uni either three times a week or sometimes twice a week. So all the other days that I wasn't going to uni, I'd go straight to the dance classes. And then I dance all day Saturday. But I did that for about five years. I had very little sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember thinking, am I ever going to dance? But, you know, in my head, I thought I've got plans. I, I could, dancing doesn't happen. I've got my degree in finance and I'm working at a bank. So I've got two things going on. But I was so pleased when dancing kicked off because that was obviously my, my heart and soul. It was my favorite. But I started dancing really, really late. So I always say to people, you know, it doesn't matter what your, your career is or what your passions are, as long as you push for them and you strive for them, maybe it won't happen at the same exact time. Like Aliash, for example, he's been dancing since he was four. <laughs> so he's like, he was gonna be a dancer no matter what. But for me, the journey was a little bit different. Um, and I kind, of, I kind of liked that it was different because I had such different backgrounds and different experiences to the, to the other guys. But anyways. Right, so we have everything chopped, we have everything ready to go, we can start cooking. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay, so do you guys have a nice size pan like this one? Nice, good, good, very good. Oh, Emma, you good? She's getting it out. This is my favorite, favorite pan. That's a good one. There you go. Cuz. I like cooking a little bit. It's called stir fry cooking, where you just put a lot of stuff into one pan. <laughs> it's the easiest way to cook for me, especially. 
So this is our friend for today, this lovely pan. So we're gonna put just one tablespoon of the vegetable oil. Did you get your vegetable oil, you ready? I'm just gonna put one little tablespoon of the vegetable oil in. Like so, good. And then we're gonna turn it on, but not in very high heat. Put it in more on the lower, lower heat, okay? So see, mine goes up to 10. So I put it at about three or four. So it's just, just under halfway, okay? And we're gonna let that heat up a little bit. Do you have a lovely little spatula or anything like this? To... Nice, okay. Put the oil all over the pan. Let it heat for a few minutes. And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put all of the chopped onions in there, okay? Okay. Okay. See, we're doing it, you're cooking. <laughs> Your parents are gonna be so proud. I've been in uni for two years and I've never actually cooked raw chicken, so. Really? <laughs> You'll be fine, I'm gonna guide you through it. Raw chicken, this is, for me, the secret is I always use diced chicken because I'm a new cook, I'm a new, I'm new to the kitchen. And diced chicken is really easy because you can just keep moving it around and keep stirring it, keep flopping it from one side to the next and it cooks through quicker and easier. It's a little bit harder to cook just a flat chicken breast sometimes. So that's why I like using recipes with just like diced chickens. Raj's recipe is actually with chicken uh, thighs, but I don't like chicken on the bone. I can't. <laughs> so I said to Raj, I'm just gonna switch it up for me. <laughs> okay, so let's grab now all of our onions and we're just gonna put it into the pan. Nice, like so. Good. Um, and then just stir it a little bit with your spatula. Keep moving it around. And we're only gonna do this for a couple of minutes in here before we put in the next bit. You wanna try and get all the oil as much into all of it as you can. So keep moving it around. So it doesn't just have one section that sits in the middle of the pan, it keeps moving. So we get all of the onions cooked as much as we can. Okay. So you're both big movie, you're both big Strictly fans. What are you, what other hobbies do you have? What else do I do? I go out a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Although lately you probably haven't lately, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, no, no one's really going out at the moment, are they? No. Yeah. Have you um, been able to go out for dinner at least? Um, I've been out like, yeah, I've been out a couple of times, like just for like a drink with like a friend or something like that, but not yeah. out like properly. Yeah. Has lockdown been okay for both of your families? Has anybody, everybody been healthy and fine? Yeah. yeah. Good, good. It is scary, you know. My my brother actually got COVID. He, he actually got it. He did. Oh. Yeah, but he didn't get a very severe case of it. He got only a mild, mild form of it. So he didn't even know he was sick. He took the test because he knew one of his friends got it. So he wanted to make sure he was okay, but he had no symptoms. He was totally fine. And then when he went back to test again, he was, he was okay, but yeah, he actually got it. Very crazy times. That's one way for it. Say again? That's one way to describe it. <laughs> Very crazy times, I know. And what about you both for a uni and school? Did, are you, Going back now soon? Has the school stopped? Is it mostly stuff online now? Um, mine's been online since March, but we're going back in September. So okay. I don't commute from home, so I live in Plymouth, like when I'm at uni. So right, right, right. yeah, I'll be going back to campus in September, hopefully. Oh, hopefully. Are you looking forward to going back or, or have yeah. you enjoyed being away from school? <laughs> I'm looking forward to going back. Yeah. I can't wait for Strictly to come back. I have like itchy feet. I'm in the kitchen like <laughs> dancing on. The other day, I'll tell you a funny story. I put my Latin shoes on and I just came in the kitchen and I was making dinner and I just did Roomba walks all the way around the kitchen to keep myself, <laughs> keep myself moving. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for the next bit. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the chorizo, okay? But for the chorizo, we're gonna turn up the heat a little bit more. So we're gonna go just above halfway through whatever the heat levels are, okay? Okay. And the chorizos, you, you chop them like this, right? Nice little round chorizo slices, cool. Yeah. 
So just put them in there. Turn up the heat a little bit. So I'm like out of 10, I go to about a six or seven. And then again, keep stirring. You want to get like the nice that flavor of the red onion in the chorizo. It's so, so good. <laughs> I mean, I love, I mean, of course, maybe my dance partners won't, but I love onions and garlic. <laughs> Okay, let's see. How are we going? Are we all right? Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay, well, we, we're going to put them in there for about two or three minutes. Uh, I just need to, I always check, making sure that I'm not forgetting anything because I'm still learning how to cook too. So I've got the recipe here in me. <laughs> um, what else do you guys want to know? Any other questions? Why did you do finance at uni? <laughs> Like, Why did I do finance? <laughs> <laughs> it just I seems know. the least thing you, like you think to do. I know. I do you know what? I was always really good at maths in school, funny enough. And I like numbers. I was one of those weird kids that really enjoyed algebra and calculus and um, statistics. Um, I had to take economy as well, and I really enjoyed the economy courses. But I was just good with numbers. Um, and I think my, my aunt, I had two aunts, they're both obviously still in Miami, and both my aunts worked in banks in, in Miami. And my aunt said to me, you know, there's an opening at the bank in the loan department. Uh, and I said, okay, so because I started working at the bank and I was good with numbers, when I uh, went to uni, I thought, well, do you know what? I'm gonna get a degree in finance. <laughs> And nothing to do with a cha-cha lock or a Roomba set, but you know, hey -oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, I like numbers. I've always liked numbers. And I like learning. I think it's good to constantly keep trying. Like, like I said, I'm taking this course not from Yale. I think it's good to constantly keep learning. And even with dancing, you know, I did musical theater, and ballet, and jazz. And ballroom and Latin came later on in my life. I mean, I danced salsa my whole life because I'm Cuban. Cubans, every single Cuban dances salsa. <laughs> Engraved in our blood. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I thought that I enjoyed numbers a lot. And because I was working at the bank, I thought, why not? Let's do that. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, what about, um, so do you guys dance at all? No. <laughs> no? You know what's the easiest way to learn a step that you could do even in the kitchen while you're cooking? You can stand with your feet together and both legs straight, right? And you just bend one knee and then the other knee and then one knee and then the other <laughs> knee. You're dancing. That's it. You need to do it while you're cooking. Look at that. <laughs> nice and easy. Uh, so how long have you guys been watching Strictly for? Forever. Yeah. yeah, basically. Yeah. You know, I think this is going to be Anton's 18th series. Isn't that crazy? That is actually crazy. That's amazing. I always take my hat off there. I'm like, I want to be Anton. I want to be in there forever. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys get up to during lockdown? I've been working through most of it, so it's not really been... Right. Right, so... right, right. right. Okay, did you keep stirring the chorizo and the onions in there, yeah? You've been stirring it? Okay, now the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to double check, is we're going to drop the heat a little bit. So drop the heat back down to, let's say, halfway, like let's say five. I'm out of ten, I do it at about a five. And now we're going to add the chicken, okay? We're going to add the chicken, we're going to add the pepper, the paprika, and the garlic, those four. Literally, just toss them in there. So put in the chicken. Uh-huh, stir it around, mix it all in there. Okay, and now we're gonna also add the peppers. So grab your peppers and put the pepper in as well. Oh, this is gonna be nice, can't wait. Uh, and then we're also gonna add in the garlic. So all this finely chopped garlic that you got, add in the garlic. Keep stirring, keep stirring. Thank God we have big pans for this. It's a big, big meal, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Good. And
And then last but not least, we're gonna add just a little bit of paprika. Now, I, if I remember correctly, it's two tablespoons of paprika. Now, I only put one because it's a little bit spicy for my liking, but if you really like spicy, you can add even more than two tablespoons, okay? But Ali, Ali just likes anything. He loves all food. And when you put it in, try and spread it around the whole pan. So don't dump all of it in one bit. Try and spread it through all the way across like that. So just kind of shake it and put it all the way around so you get in all the bits of it. Like that, yeah. And then again, we're just gonna keep stirring and keep stirring. Make sure that the heat is about halfway so that the, kid, the chicken doesn't burn in there. And um, if you guys can see, I think you might be able to see me. Instead of just going around in circles when you do it, grab it and flip it around so you could, you're gonna see the chicken is gonna start turning white. Okay, do you see your chicken? Yeah. Yeah, so we want it to go white. We don't want it to go golden because that means it's burnt a little bit. So we want the chicken to be nice and, and juicy. <laughs> That's why we keep the heat a little bit lower because if you put the heat too high, the chicken will burn too fast. Okay? And again, this is like the, the secret is to keep stirring. <laughs> Just keep stirring. Okay. Uh, what else? What else would you guys like to know? Uh, you can ask questions. Um, Where was the first place you went after lockdown? First place I went to after lockdown. Well, that's a very good question, isn't it? Well, Ali Ash and I just came back from our holiday for our anniversary. Uh, we went to Tenerife, which I've never been to, and I absolutely loved it. It's such a beautiful place, Tenerife. Um, but I think maybe just, just a coffee shop, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I love making coffee at home, but there's something about just going to your local coffee shop around your around the corner from your place. No, it's like my little local coffee spa, my little local Tesco's or Astro. <laughs> Those are the little things that you kind of miss, isn't it? I think um, what we went to actually a lunch with a friend a couple of weeks back. And I remember sitting at the lunch and the restaurant was so empty. It was like every other table. And we only have two people sat distance from, a, from each other. And it was so strange to see this restaurant that I would normally go to, always really jam-packed and busy with just certain groups of, of uh, people in there. Also, the, the have you guys been to restaurants where now they ask you with your smartphone to uh, scan the QC code and then you get your menu so that you don't have to touch anything? I thought that was so smart. <laughs> Not the ones like down where I am, <clears throat> where I am, are like we're, they're using disposable menus. So it's like they already oh, really? have on their table on the table, and then they get thrown away after like you leave. Oh wow! Well, yeah, I mean it's going to be the new way forward, isn't it? And all the waiters are wearing masks as well. Um, there's hand sanitizers in every corner of every shop and of every restaurant <laughs> and pub. But this is so good, we need to keep doing that so that we don't get any, any kind of, you know, big resurgence of it. Okay, are you guys still stirring? You're all good? Yeah. Do you see that everything is kind of starting to become one color a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the chicken's getting lighter, it's cooking, but if you notice the onions now, the onions are now almost orange. <laughs> the chorizo does that, chorizo, when you mix it in there, and the paprika really changes the, te the color of the food. So just keep stirring, just keep stirring. <laughs> Are you guys Disney fans? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, good. Me too. <laughs> if it's, I'm going to put the heat up a little bit just to speed up the cooking, but only by one, just to help it cook a little bit quicker. But if the higher the heat, the more you need to keep stirring so it doesn't burn any, any chicken or anything. <laughs> Oh, it smells so good. <gasps> Aliash is gonna be so happy. <laughs> um, okay, so what else? Um, 
What's your favorite Disney film? Uh, hello. <laughs> Are you doing like this? Tell them this is your favorite, isn't it? I love this chicken. You can come here. You can stand here. Better. Like there. <laughs> hello. Hi. Why do you love it, baby? Why do you? Why well, I love it. It it tastes amazing. Um, I love the, the chicken. I love chorizo. Uh, I love um, peppers. I like everything about it. Love no garlic and, and onions. <laughs> garlic and onions. Is that, was that what I was supposed to say? No, I just said that. Garlic and onions is not a great one. You're not a dance partner. <laughs> no, not for rumba. Is that the, your first time making it as well? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I told them, keep stirring, just keep stirring, just keep stirring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you can smell it already, no? Can you guys smell it already? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Smells nice. I love it. I can't wait. Are you excited? Yeah. You know yeah. what, Aliasha? I have to come when, when, when I start smelling that. Aliasha always does the salads. He's oh, really, salads. really good with the salads. Mine is like a two minute job, though. <laughs> <laughs> I like clean sometimes after. You clean. I can do. Really you clean. Too. Yeah. But they're, they're both at uni. Am I? Am I? What are you studying? Speech therapy. Nice. Uh, media. Oh, cool. Yeah. Go on, girls. Independent ladies, I would say. Very much so. Um, so, Ali Ash is the one that actually gave me the idea to cook this for today's cook along. Okay. I said, What should I make? It was chicken and chorizo. And I was like, I know why, because you can eat it straight away after. <laughs> <laughs> This is because this is camera, so for for Jeanette's height. I know. So if I'm standing in, it's basically. This. <laughs> you can see what I'm doing. I know, I know, but I've been trying to get it. Right, girls, I'm gonna let let you do it. Smash it. Okay, we're ready to add the next little bit now. So just turn turn the heat down a little bit so the chicken doesn't burn. So put it back down to like halfway heat for a second. Because now we're gonna add in all of the the chickpeas and the chopped tomatoes and the chicken stew. Mm -hmm. So let me just make sure, make sure, make sure. Okay, so now we're gonna add, do you have a can of the the tomatoes? Yeah. Nice, okay, so we're gonna pop that in there. Uh, you don't need to drain it. It's kind of nice to have everything in there. Oh gosh, it's so weak. And just put the whole tin in there, okay? And then when it comes to the chickpeas, we're gonna do the same, but just not just yet. We're gonna add, let me just make sure, the tomatoes and the chicken stock. Okay, so the chicken stock that we did earlier, that's gonna go in now as well. Oh, nice. This is gonna get messy now, I love it. <laughs> and again, go back to stirring. Just make sure that you keep stirring. <laughs> so that all the bits get nice and cooked. All together. Oh, this looks amazing. Do you see it? Yeah. Happy with what you see? It's gonna taste amazing as well. Promise. Woo! Okay, so again, keep stirring. If you want, you can turn the heat up just a tiny bit again, or just leave it. And just make sure that the secret is to keep stirring, keep stirring. So that the chicken can keep cooking, the chorizo can keep cooking, all the peppers and everything. Um, and now we're gonna add a tiny bit of pepper again. It's up to you how much you use. I don't like a lot, <laughs> but uh, I just drizzle it a little bit over the top and that's it. Aliash loves pepper, so I always just leave the pepper out for him so he can put more if he wants. <laughs> and again, keep stirring, just keep stirring through. All good over there with both? Definitely. Yeah, good, good. The chicken should be a little bit more on the softer white side now. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, good. Uh, let me just double check my on the right things. Yes, so now we stir it, leave it in like about a medium heat there, and we're gonna put a little lid on top of this, and we're gonna let it simmer for about 15 minutes while we have a nice little catch-up chat. Oh, that's too small. It's not the right one. And then, oh, I don't think I have the big one here. Let me see. Wait. Do I have my big one? No, I don't. It's okay. We'll just put it about half halfway in the heat, and we're just gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes, okay? And it's all gonna get nice and juiced up all together. But we chat. 
Um, so what else? You guys sent me a few questions, actually. You're going to, you're going to shy on me now. <laughs> um, what's your favorite Disney film? Oh, hands down, The Little Mermaid. When I was seven, uh, let me just put the timer on. Wait, um, put your timer on your phone somewhere. Or I can put it on mine and I'll let you know. 15 minutes just so that we leave it there all cooking, okay? Hold on. Where is my timer? Yeah, there we go. 15 minutes of letting it simmer and then we're going to come back and stir a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so The Little Mermaid. When I was seven, obviously I'm not... Diane Buswell is the epitome of Ariel because she's got the perfect red hair, doesn't she? <laughs> and she loves green. She always loves the color green as well. Um, but I'm, I'm more Latina, but brunette hair, I've got darker skin. So when I was seven, my mom made me a mermaid costume. She made me like the purple bra. She made <laughs> me a green mermaid tail. And then she got like a spray paint for hair, like to, to paint your hair. And she painted my hair red for the day. <laughs> and uh, I invited all of our families like cousins and friends over and we didn't have a very big house back then so my mom got like three kiddie pools you know like those little the little plastic ones she got three kiddie pools and filled them up with water and like toy flounders and toy Sebastians and like bubble like little <laughs> bubble stuff and it was the best best birthday ever I was seven I, mean, I have to see if I can find the photo but I love, I love The Little Mermaid. I love all the classics, though. I love Beauty and the Beast. I love The Lion King. I love Aladdin. That was kind of my generation when all those were coming out. That's when I was, like, watching. I watched The Little Mermaid religiously every single day for about a whole year. My mom was like, Jeanette, <laughs> we need to switch this up. She was so happy when the other films came out because then I started watching more than just The Little Mermaid. <laughs> what about you guys? Do you have favorite Disney movies? Um... I used to love Sleeping Beauty when I was little, Aww. and I still have like a toy Aurora, like from when I was Aww. like five. Um, what else? I don't think I have a least favorite Disney film. Yeah, I don't, I don't like. I don't think there's one I don't like either. I haven't seen Onward. Have you seen that one? No. Sorry. No, I want to see it. It's the new kind of like Pixar Disney one. I haven't seen it. But I did. You guys watch Frozen too? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> crying. And Ash looked at me at one point and said, are you okay? I was like, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many people on TikTok. What was that sound that she does? Oh, the, you know, the, the yeah. singing that she does in the movie. <laughs> I'm always doing it on TikTok. It was making me laugh so much. But you know what? I, I think because I grew up watching Disney films, and my mom and my dad, especially my dad, when they were in Cuba and they were young in Cuba, they the because of the whole communism in the country, they didn't get the Disney Channel. They didn't get to watch any of the Disney movies. So my dad's biggest like thing in the world when he moved to the USA from Cuba was to just stop watching all the Disney films and go to Walt Disney World because it had opened not long before um, I, I was born. So when I was one, I went on my first ever Disney trip with my family. And then I've gone every single year for my whole life and I'm going to be 37 now. So that means I've gone 37 times to Disney. And some years, I've even gone two and three times. So I think overall, I'm, I'm at about at least 45 times I've been to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Ali Ash said to me, he says, don't you get tired of it? And I said, no. Because <laughs> when I go, I just feel like a kid again. It's my faith. Do you guys, you guys have something similar. You've got Alton Towers and Thorpe Park, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I don't think yeah. it's as good as this. I went to Disney when I was like four, but I don't think those places are as good as Disney. But it's different, isn't it? They're more yeah. like water coaster adventure parks. Yeah. But I mean, I'm dying to go to Alton Towers. It looks really oh, fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Aliash and I do a dance show there once a year. We couldn't do it this year because of COVID. Um, but and normally we have a big dance weekend that we do and they always invite us to do it there at Alton Towers. But when we go, the park is closed. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, I want to go and go and it's open so I can see the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, Disney's, um, I'm a big Disney kid. And I keep saying, when I have children, I hope they like Disney. Imagine they don't like Disney. I don't know anyone that doesn't like Disney. <laughs> Say again? I don't know anyone that doesn't like Disney. True, so. true. My friend just had twins 
and she's like showing them all the Disney movies and got them all the stuffed animals of like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy. <laughs> she's like, they're not gonna have a choice but to love the characters when they go. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Disney's been great. And um, what else? What else? I love this. This is fun. We're like cooking the food. Everything's good. What Disney film would you want to be in out of any film? I mean, obviously, The Little Mermaid is my favourite. I still play like when I go to the pool now, even in Tenerife, I said to Alias, look underwater. I can swim really good like a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> He was laughing at me, he goes, you're a very good mermaid, baby, you're a very good mermaid. <laughs> I think there's a live action of that one, actually, that's going to be released soon. Yeah. Um, so I would love to play that. But you know what? I love Belle and Beauty and the Beast. I think maybe personality-wise, I'm the most like Belle. Quite nerdy, adventurous, and I make jokes with Ali Ash and I tell him that he's the beast. Because <laughs> he's so much bigger than I am. <laughs> Yeah, but I know there hasn't been, I don't think, a, a Latina princess. So if they ever do a Latina princess, I would love to play that. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Are you checking your food? Let's do one quick little stir. It's all going really nicely. Let's just stir it through salt slowly because it could get messy. Just give it a nice stir. Everything is looking so good. Now, when we finish the, when we finish this, okay, you can eat it in two ways. You can just have it either just on its own with some, a little bit of a side salad, or I like, like putting just some, you know, like Uncle Ben's two minute rice and just stick it in the microwave and I have it with just plain white rice. <sighs> but it's up to you. You can have it on its own or you can have it with a bit of rice. I'm, I'm going to have it with some rice on the side and get this, a banana. That is probably <laughs> the weirdest thing about me ever is that because I'm Cuban and the Cubans is very similar to Jamaican food. So it's Caribbean type of stuff, except for the jerk with the, you know, the jerk chicken is very spicy. Cubans don't do anything spicy, but in the sense of like, we like beans, we like rice and there, we love this uh, side of fried plantains. It's a very, very, very traditional Cuban side dish. And so as a kid growing up, my grandma and my mom would always give me a side of the fried plantains. And if we didn't have the fried plantains, my mom would just chop up a banana and give me just a banana on the side. Now as an adult, 37 I'm gonna be, I have to have a banana with everything. I have banana with this tonight, I'll have a banana with spaghetti, bananas with like chicken soup, banana with just like chicken and rice, like, oh. It doesn't go good with seafood. That's the only thing I did know. <laughs> Joe Sugg, you know Joe Sugg? Yeah. yeah. He asked me that question on tour last year. He said, Jeanette, because he'd never seen me eat a banana with everything. So he was really shocked. And when he saw me eating, like, I think it was like spaghetti with a banana, he went, what is that? <laughs> and I said, I know, I realized that. It's like really weird quirk of mine. I have to have a banana with everything. And he goes, is there anything that you eat that a banana doesn't go with? And I said, I don't know. Couple of days later, we were having like fish on tour. I think it was like salmon or something like that. And I sat down and I started eating the salmon and Joe goes, where's your banana? And I go, that's it. Banana and seafood, it doesn't go. That's the only <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, I love bananas. Do you have a favorite food, favorite fruit or favorite like anything when it comes to food? I do eat a lot of bananas. But then do it well done. <laughs> I like strawberries. I love strawberries. Mm -hmm. What about yourself, Emma? Pasta. <gasps> I can live both of you. Like, yeah, now I can live on pasta. Oh, Italian food is oh, one of my favorites ever. Um, they, they, I'm, I'm, and it's not too hard to cook, actually. Not too difficult, depending on what you're making. Oh, I know how to cook, cook how to make pasta. That's fine. Yeah, and then you just put it <laughs> boil in water and then. Um, I recently started making spaghetti bolognese for Aliash because that's his favorite, favorite dish that he, his mom makes. She makes the most incredible spaghetti bolognese. So I said to him, I'm going to try and get your mom's recipe so I can cook it. And I've been making it, but I'm not at his mom's level just yet. I'm getting closer and closer. <laughs> she does a really good spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> what about sweets? Do you like sweets and desserts? Yeah. Yeah? Do you have a favorite? Um, oh, those ice lollies that are shaped like strawberries. 
Those ones. The ice cream shaped like strawberries. Yeah, the I don't know what they're called. The they look like strawberries. Oh, I don't know what that I is. That's, <laughs> that's that, is my <laughs> that sounds good though. I mean, ice cream shaped like strawberries. It sounds like really good strawberry ice cream. <laughs> Uh, what about yourself, Emily? Any favourites? Um, I love chocolate, so I can't eat cakes because I'm allergic to egg. So I oh, can't eat desserts. So okay. I live on like cho like magic stars, chocolate buttons. Oh, nice, nice. Well, I have I can never decide because I love a sticky toffee pudding. <sighs> And I like it with a vanilla ice cream. Some people like cream. I like it with a side of vanilla ice cream. That is like heaven. And then I love a banoffee pie. Oh, okay, of course, bananas. It's like <laughs> I love a, a banoffee pie. My dad said that when I go back home to Miami, because my dad makes really, really great desserts. It's like one of his favorite things to do. And he said that he's going to learn to make both. So when I go back home and visit, you can have some homemade sticky toffee pudding and banoffee pie. <laughs> but it's my favorite snack ever. That's a bit of a naughty snack. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on tour, ask anybody that does a tour with me, any of the dancers that are, or the cast members on tour, they see me with either a pack of peanut M&Ms or Doritos Cool Ranch. Those are my two really guilty snack pleasures. <laughs> Do you guys like peanut M&M's? Yeah. No. I've... No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, what else? Well, I think one of your questions was about, I read some of them, skimmed through them before we had our chat today, or our cooking session today, I should say. <laughs> um, and one of the questions that, that you guys mentioned was, how do I stay so positive and so happy? Yeah. And do you know what? I think... A lot of people assume that I'm just happy all the time because that's what I put on Instagram. But I do that consciously because I know that people come to see what I'm doing or where, where I am or what my thoughts are. And I want to spread positivity. I want to spread happiness and I want to spread joy. So that's why I put what I put out there as always positive. Because even on the days that I'm not having a good day, if I post something really happy and positive on my Instagram, it even makes me feel better. But in general, like I am just like anybody else. I have ups and downs. I have days that are like, like especially in lockdown, I really, really miss dancing. So that was really, really hard for me. And I got really sad that we weren't touring and I wasn't doing what I love as much as I could. Um, and I think as long as you've got tools that you can pull from to get you out of any kind of like a bad mental state. So for me, I love to look at old family photos or I love looking at like on my phone, I just scroll through my phone and I look at funny videos of us doing something silly at a restaurant or like anything, you know, I reach out to my family a lot. So when I get down or I'm having tough days, I always call my parents and I talk to my mom and my dad or my brother and my sister and just even just talking to them makes me feel better. Um, and I think, yeah, just going, I think following even accounts on Instagram or Twitter that are all about positive affirmations are so important. So when I go through my Instagram feed or my Twitter feed, the things that pop up are always really positive and, and inspiring and uplifting. Um, I, I think that it's so important that especially your generation, that you guys follow accounts and follow individuals that exude positivity and well-being and happiness uh, because it could be really tough, you know? It's so easy nowadays to have social comparisons. You see someone's lifestyle on Instagram and you're like, oh my God, how lucky are they? How incredible are they? But you have to remember that people put on social media like, uh, like only the best parts of their lives. But just like everybody else, we all have tough days. But I think what makes me kind of stay happy and positive even on those tough days is, like I said, my family, Obviously dancing is a big one, but I didn't have dancing for a long time. If I'm having a bad day, when I go on stage and I dance, I feel automatically better because it's my passion. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, like everybody else, we all have tough days. You just have to have the right kind of tools that you can pull from to get you out of those like humps when you have a bad one. Lately, I've been meditating a lot. I meditate almost every single day now. And even just meditating calms me down. It, you know, the anxiety of not doing shows, not knowing what's gonna happen with everything with COVID, even with Strictly Come Dancing, there was so much up and down, we didn't know what was gonna happen depending on what happened with the virus. So on those days that I felt really anxious and had a little bit of anxiety or nerves, 
I did a lot of meditation because it helped me. And um, and to be honest, you just everybody online in the online community. Don't you guys think that after COVID, there was this feeling, even on like any kind of social media outlet, that you felt a community of people really coming together? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I love going on my Instagram or my Twitter and just like seeing the same names popping up and like people tuning in to watch my talks with Jeanette or to do a little bit of a party ballet workout with me and creating that online community that was based on positivity and we've got this, we're gonna get through it together. I loved it. I thought it was so great. Yes, we're ready. We're ready. But yeah, I think staying positive is more than just being happy. It's about learning how to navigate your, your mind as well. Okay, so let's stir it a little bit. Let's see where we are. Does yours look good? Yeah, I think so. It should be a little bit soupy because it's a stew, so it's watery. But the chicken um, should be cooked nicely now. The chorizo should also be cooked nicely. And it should all look a little bit like orangey and red, right? One big stew. Yeah. Stir it around a little bit. And now the last two things we're going to do is we're going to add our chickpeas. We're almost there. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let me just make sure. Uh, yep. All we're going to do now is add the chickpeas. So you've got this, right? You see this can of the chickpeas? Yep. But we need to drain them, okay? So what I do to drain it is I open it up, okay? Open it up, and then I grab that same exact lid, and I just hold the edge and let all the water drain out. Your moms and dads are going to be so proud of both of you. <laughs> did you tell your parents you're going to cook today? Yeah. Yeah. What did they say? My dad was concerned that I was going to burn the house down. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I'm not going to lie. When I first started cooking, I was nervous I was going to burn my kitchen down. <laughs> but, you know, the, the thing with cooking is the more that you try it, the more you start learning little bits here and there. I find that the more that I cook, the more now I know, okay, you put the heat too high, you burn the chicken. If you don't chop up the onions in this way, you're not gonna get the right, you know, um, texture and the things that you want. You know what kind of seasonings work, what's, what, what kind of, whether that's like paprika like we use today, or if you use oregano, or if you use like rosemary, you find out what seasoning works best with what kinds of food. But it only works by trying. You gotta try every day and do a little, once a week, set yourself a little task that you're gonna cook one new little recipe. <laughs> okay, so now after you've drained them, you just put them in. Did you guys put them in already? Um, I'm just not. So put in the chickpeas. We're gonna give it one nice big stir again. Oh, this looks amazing. And the chickpeas is probably one of the best little secrets of this recipe because the chickpeas give they soak up a little bit of the stew size um which may, is a watery bit like the chicken stock and the tomato and also when you eat it you'll see when you eat it it gives it a really nice texture so you, when you're eating it it's not just like the veggies and the chicken the peppers you get a nice little texture with the chickpeas as well i never knew i even liked chickpeas so i tried this recipe <laughs> tried it and I was like oh actually I'm gonna start putting chickpeas in everything now <laughs> and like I said stir it and then always kind of grab the bottom and bring it up as well so you get everything even from the bottom coming up as well and be careful because it could get messy <laughs> okay and now we're gonna leave that for five minutes as well give it a nice stir and then we're just gonna let it sit for five minutes so we're gonna put our alarm again Five more minutes, and we're almost done. I'm so excited. It's gonna taste amazing. You're gonna be so happy you cooked it. Okay, alarm for five minutes. Right, last, last little bit. So, is there anything else you guys want to know? Um, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? If I could go anywhere in the world, ooh, yeah. that's a very good question. I've traveled a lot. I've been very lucky because so when I did the show, burn the floor. It was a world tour, so I was able to go to like, I would have never gone to Singapore or Japan or China. I've never like, would have gotten out there to Asia. 
I was so happy to go and see that. But I think I have this thing with Morocco lately. I've been dying to go to Morocco. Um, I don't know why. I just love the culture and I love kind of the design there. Have you been to no. Morocco? Either no. of you? They like, don't you feel like all the tile, the way they do the tiling, like the, the culture, the clothing, the fashion, it seems like such a cool, beautiful place. Um, Karim is from Morocco, actually. And he was telling me that he goes often to see his family back there. So I think, yeah, I would love to go to Morocco. But probably one of my favorite places in the world is South Africa. Have you guys been? No. I went to South Africa twice for work. I would, again, Aliash and I were on tour dancing. Um, but the first time that I went, I was there for a month. Oh, it was so beautiful. We went to a uh, tabletop mountain and then we went to Camps Bay, which is this beautiful beach in Cape Town. And just the food, the culture, the people there are so friendly and there's so much to do. Oh, we went cage diving with great white sharks. Oh my God, I'd be too scared to do that. Well, I said no at first. <laughs> And then when I got there, Aliash gave me that last push, like, come on, baby, this is an adventure, you could do it. And I said, fine. And oddly enough, when you see them swimming in the water, and there was a lot of them, there was like 10 at least, just swimming around the boat, great white sharks. They call it Shark Alley, that's where the, the boat went. And, um, and when you see them swimming, they're actually quite peaceful. You don't feel that scared. What was scary though, was once I went in the cave, <laughs> I went in the cave and I, you know, you're trying to find the shark. So you're like squinting to see where the shark is coming. And because the waters are so dark and deep and murky, you'd be squinting trying to find it. And all of a sudden, whoa, it would be, <laughs> it would be right there. Like, because I'm so small and they put us in these like black, um, you know, like the black diving gear. I said to Alias, what do they think I'm a seal? I look like a seal in that outfit, you know? And they were like, oh, that's a cute hungry one. They were hungry, they could go in and eat. But no, I, uh, South Africa was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, do you know where I've never been? Is Cuba. And my whole family's Cuban. And I was born in Miami and I spoke Spanish and I grew up with a Cuban culture, but I've never actually been to Cuba. So I'm desperate to go there as well. Just to learn a bit more about my own family's culture and history and a little bit more of, of the Cuban culture and um yes yeah, so that's that's a big one I'd love to go there one day I think I will soon fingers crossed <laughs> have you guys ever been to the USA I went to New York a couple of years ago did you like it yeah I'd love it there yeah it's a cool city did you go in the summer or winter at time I went in the August Oh, so not was, bad. So it was a bit of a little bit of summer, but not too hot because July yeah, can get really hot. Yeah, yeah. What about yourself, Emily? Uh, no, I've never been. I've, I've always been to but I've never been. Yeah, I lived in Los Angeles for a while, and Los Angeles is beautiful. Uh, but I've never lived in New York. I've just visited New York. Uh, but obviously, my favorite city in the USA is Miami. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to take Ali Ashland. You know that really long Route 66 that you can go through all of the states from east to west to west to east so that we can visit all the cool parts of, of the USA and do that cool long road trip. So we might do that. I mean, we'll see what happens with COVID and everything. But if I can get home for Christmas, number one, we're going to go to Disney World, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to see if we can do some really cool like Route 66 trips. That would be amazing. That would be really cool. But yeah, you know what? And even doing the, the tour with Ali Ash, going on tour here in the UK, going up to Scotland. We even did it last this year on the Strictly Live Tour. We went to Belfast as well. And there's so many beautiful places that you can see even just here in the UK. I went to the Cotswold um, this week. Uh, Aliash and I went to stay out in the country and I had never been to the Cotswold. It's so beautiful there. Everything, all the houses and all the little businesses and coffee shops and restaurants and um, I'm obsessed with afternoon tea and all the little afternoon tea rooms. They were so pretty. There's so much I feel like a lot of people obviously want to get out, but I think there's so much that you can do even within the UK as well. Okay, guys, one last stir. Let's see how we're doing. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. Ah! How does it smell? Do you smell it? It smells really good. It smells amazing, doesn't it? Oh, I can't wait to eat. Now, like I said, it's up to you if you want to make it a little bit more spicy. 
You can always add a little bit more pepper or add a little bit of more paprika and make it keep stirring it in. But if, if you're like me and don't do spicy, this is just enough spice the way that we did it. Uh, and stir it. And now just make sure that you find like a, 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 where, a place to put it that keeps the pan from burning through. So I have one of these guys. I'll show you. Where are you? I've got one of these. So all I do is a, like an iron oven, oven top thing. Um, and I serve it just like that. I take it straight off from there. I put it on this, pour a little bit of uh, the parsley over it. And then, uh, and that's it. You're ready to serve it. Let's see what it looks like. Give it one last, one last stir. Oh, <laughs> can't wait. I'm starving as well, so it's perfect timing. Okay, now if you did, if you did get the parsley, just grab a little bit of the parsley. Did you get parsley? Yeah. Yeah, and just and make it, just chop it up really finely and just juice a little bit of parsley over it because it gives it a nice little last minute uh, taste. Oh, I am so happy for you guys cooking your first meal <laughs> with me. Thank you again for your donations. That's the most important thing is that we were able to raise some funds for the Pink Ribbon Foundation. I love working with charities and doing charity work. So this was, when they asked if I wanted to be a part of it, I said, yes. I don't know how good of a cook I'll be, but <laughs> hopefully I can inspire somebody like you guys to get into the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, so just put your parsley, just all, just it all over it. And then you should be ready to go. Yay! And you've got to taste it. I'm going to taste it with you as well. We're going to do a little tasting together. <laughs> Voila, guys. You just cooked your first meal. How does it feel, Emma? Um, it depends how it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you like chicken and chorizo and peppers, and like I said, the, the taste of it all mixed in together is going to give a really nice... Really, it's one of my favorite dishes that Ron just put in his, in his recipe book. I love it. Um, okay, I think we're ready to taste it. Give it one last stir with the parsley in there. Nice, and then we're gonna grab a lovely spoonful. Now the chicken is, is you might need to cut it. Um, so grab like a tiny piece of the chicken, a piece of the chorizo, chickpeas, try and get everything in there and taste it. Should taste really, really good. Say again. It's hot. I know. Wait, don't burn yourself. And you know who's gonna be my ultimate uh, taster? Taster. Aliash. Aliash. I'm gonna get him to come and taste it and see what he thinks. Unless he's, I think he might be doing a zoom right now. Yeah, make sure you blow. This is boiling right now. Mmm. Wow. I love it. Mm. Well done, us. Mm. Now don't bury yourself. It is really, really hot, so be careful. <laughs> but now you can have it with um a little bit of a side of white rice or brown rice, or like I said, on it on its own with some veggies and a salad. Whatever, whatever, there's no right or wrong way to eat it. I like having with a bit of white rice, so I'm gonna get my two minute Uncle Ben's <laughs> rice back and do that now and have a side of banana, of course. <laughs> but did you taste it? Be careful, it's really hot. Yeah, no, it tastes really good. It tastes good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Happy, what about you, Emma? Yeah, it tastes nice. Yeah, it's a bit, little, tiny bit spicy, but just spicy enough. Do you like spicy food? I, like a little bit, but not. Yeah, not too spicy. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm like my tongue. Anything too spicy. I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> uh, right. Let me see if Aliash is, is able to come and taste it. He's the ultimate tester. Ready? Okay. Okay. We didn't set our houses on fire. Oh, okay, this is the moment of truth, guys. Let me put a little spoonful for him. It's gonna come. This is the moment, baby. Go on. 
I think you're gonna love it. No, I guess the chicken's not diced yet, sorry. <laughs> Let me grab you a chorizo, some peppers, and a little piece of the chicken out of it, obviously. It's chicken. They did it, baby, they cooked. The girls cooked. Congratulations. The meal. <laughs> First. Yeah, it's very hot. So grab it and blow, but be careful, this is really hot. This is the moment. Nice! That's the face we want! That's the face we want! It's lovely. Okay, now it's your turn to make the salad. <laughs> well, Good girls, job. thank you so much. Are you happy with it? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Is there anybody else at home going to eat with you guys? You've got a really nice portion for yourselves. Um, I think my mum and brother have already eaten because they went to <laughs> Well, you can always box it up and have it tomorrow. Yeah. That's fine. But you can enjoy it nice and fresh today. <laughs> Any other questions before I let you guys go? Before we head off? Probably, yeah. but I can't think of any. <laughs> <laughs> well, just send them to my uh, Instagram. Tag me and ask the question and I'll answer. <laughs> but thank you again so thank much you. for, for joining you. me and for donating to the Pink Ribbon Foundation. I hope you enjoy your little meal there. I hope you like it. And um, yeah, keep stirring. That's what we learned today. <laughs> keep stirring. <laughs> okay, have an amazing rest of your Sunday night. And I will hopefully see you all on Saturday evenings, every Saturday until Christmas very soon. <laughs> okay, thank you both. Thank you. Bye-bye.